let ourselves forget everything we know about cars, would we invent the same car industry we have today? What would happen if we just started clean? Make a smarter car that says more about our hopes than our frustrations. What if a car could make the city turn its volume down? And what if the back seat was the new front seat? And what if all those cars parked in driveways had more interesting lives? And we did too. And what if we created new spaces, not for sheet metal, but for people? What if you didn't so much own a car as use one whenever you need it? And what if every drive was the opportunity to make a smart choice for the planet? We believe the next generation of us requires a new generation of car because so much of the future depends on how we get there. So, come with us. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen in Las Vegas and around the world. Thank you for joining us. Please welcome the head of public relations for Faraday Future, Stacy Morris. Well, teleprompter, please, would be helpful. We're at. Uh... <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here tonight. We're flattered that this event is a hot ticket. We have a packed house tonight, and there's many more who wanted to attend. And thanks for you for, for those who are viewing from home. We have a lot to share with you this evening, so let's jump right in. For a fairly new company, there's been quite a lot of attention on us, and we are honored. There's been a lot of news coverage, and some of it recent and a little unexpected. And others, the storylines have been quite entertaining for even us to read. Tonight, we will introduce you to Faraday Future, or as we like to be called, FF for short. We will introduce you to some of our key players and update you on a few major achievements to date. We will share with you why we believe there are major opportunities for us to totally redefine the future of mobility. We know that sounds like a huge undertaking, but we think it's achievable for the following four reasons. One, we have an amazing team. Two, we have a transformative vision. Three, we have incredible alliances. And four, we are very fast. And we'll top it all off this evening by unveiling something very special that our design and engineering team have to offer. One of the reasons why I joined Faraday Future from BMW was because of the incredible team, and we're adding more and more people each week. You'll be hearing from two of those individuals this evening. I'd like to introduce you to Nick Sampson. Nick is one of Faraday Future's originators, and he's the Senior Vice President of R&D and Product Development. Early in his career, Nick spent 16 years at Jaguar in product development. Then he moved to Lotus to become chief engineer and program director. Prior to joining FF, he was the director of vehicle and chassis engineering at Tesla, and where he worked on the Model S and the Model X. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nick Sampson. Well, thank you very much for that really kind introduction, Stacey, and uh, thank you for all of you for joining us this evening. Tonight, I'd like to give you a sense of how Faraday Future is completely reimagining one of the most important aspects of our lives, the way that people move efficiently, enjoyably, and responsibly around on our planet. At the pace things change today, by the time you try to fix a problem that's in front of you, it's already outdated, which is why our name is so appropriate. At Faraday Future, we're looking at the future of mobility, creating solutions, connecting our overall lives, and available to everybody. As Stacey mentioned earlier, our first differentiator is that we have an amazing team. 
Over the past 18 months, we've assembled an extraordinary group of over 550 talented individuals in California, plus 200 more globally. We're working literally night and day to reimagine, rethink and create an entirely new concept for mobility. This is a team of brilliant, like-minded individuals, visionaries and pioneers from the world's greatest technology, automotive and consumer brands. People who understand the importance of thinking big as well as acting fast. This amazing team comes from over 40 different countries and they come from such pioneering companies as Apple, BMW, Boeing, Ford, GM, Google, Apple, Jaguar, NASA, Tesla, and many more. And because our vision requires partnerships between industry and the government, we have also added a former NHTSA official to our team. But regardless of our backgrounds, we all share a common goal to profoundly move the world in better, cleaner, and more intelligent ways that connect us effortlessly to the way we choose to live. To meet that goal, we must anticipate the future and act upon it with speed, decisiveness, and a willingness to be more like a technology company rather than an automotive company. And if we define the future based on current assumptions, then we will never be able to create disruptive new products or build a transformative company. I believe we need to define the future from the future's perspective. Now, this kind of bold thinking brings me to our second differentiator. We have a very transformative vision. At FF, we're embarking on nothing less than a complete rethink of what mobility means and how it must be part of our larger world. We have to look at the forces affecting the way people move about today as well as tomorrow. And we have to ask, how can we design vehicles that respect and even enhance the environment? How can we build vehicles that offer new ways of connecting us to the larger world? How can we create a business that considers new types of ownership? Our business model is not focused on just selling cars. We're also focusing on bringing connected mobility to as many users as we can throughout the world. And how can we create a company that offers customization and enjoyment in vehicles that are incredibly reliable and, importantly, are very safe? As you probably all know, the traditional automobile industry changes very, very slowly, with new designs and technologies sometimes taking years or even a decade to bring to the market. In the tech space, however, companies like Airbnb and Uber didn't just disrupt their industries, they did it in just a few short years. Can you imagine where it would be today if the mobile phone industry acted as slowly as the automotive industry? We'd still be making calls on our Motorola StarTac flip phones. <laughs> it's as if the automotive industry has been trying to improve the landline when they should have been creating the next generation of smartphones. And while the traditional automotive industry is focusing on making better cars, we're redefining the very nature of vehicles and mobility. And you might be wondering, how is that possible? How can you do this? Well, you've heard of the first two reasons. We have an amazing team, and we have a transformative vision. Now, here's the third reason. We have incredible alliances. Quite simply, a great idea won't go anywhere if you can't get great people and great organizations behind it. And thanks to our alliances, we already have serious progress. In fact, we recently selected this great state of Nevada as our home for making our first manufacturing facility, FS first plant we built in North Las Vegas. And I'm pleased to announce that within a few weeks, we'll be breaking ground. We'll invest over a billion dollars and we will create approximately 4,500 jobs when we're fully up and running. And none of this would have been possible without the incredible support of the state of Nevada, Brian, the governor, Brian Sandoval, the mayor of North Las Vegas, John Lee. And we're honored to have both of them here this evening. So, Governor Sandoval and Mayor John Lee, stand to be recognized.
we'd very much like to thank you for all the hard work and enthusiasm you put into this project. Now, you're probably all asking yourselves, OK, you have an excellent team, you have a new manufacturing facility, but what other things set you apart? Well, I'd now like to mention another extremely important alliance we have, the one we have with LETV. LETV is often called the Netflix of China, and it was founded in 2004 by Yerting Jia. LETV is a leading global technology brand, expanding into the Hong Kong, India, and now the USA. LETV's ecosystem brings consumers premium content via their six screens, one cloud strategy. And this spans flat screen TVs, tablets, smartphones, PCs, theatre, and now electric vehicles. In 2014, LETV created its own La Auto division. And one of its founders, Mr. Ding Lei, he was the president and CEO of the Shanghai General Motors, chairman of a national high-tech park development company, and the deputy governor of Pudong New District, with a population of over 5 million. Yet while FF and LETV are two separate companies, we are working together on various elements of our vehicle development. And in addition, LETV has prestige and deep relationships within China. And this will open doors to us, to new investors, and to help us enter the very significant market of China. So I am pleased tonight to introduce to you Mr. Deng Lei. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. Uh, distinguished guests, friends from our media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and a happy new year. Uh, I'm uh, so glad on behalf of LTV, together with my colleagues, to witness and uh, help to celebrate the a brand burst the brand for future. I just uh, sitting behind the uh, stage. I now listen very careful, not not listen very clearly what Nick said, but uh, what he said, I all agree. Because it's time for changing our mind to future future mobility. Like Nick said, I was uh, in the auto industry about over 25 years. I suspended my career by 2011. There's uh, many reasons behind. But there's uh, one important reason is uh, because of our story. And uh, there's a famous woodcutter in China, Mr. Ma. During his uh, 35 years career, he felled down about 100,000 trees. When he reached, uh, reached the retirement, he felt some uh, sense of uh, gu guilty. He decided to plant a tree back to the earth. So after retire and before he died, he plant back 100,000 trees back to the earth. So this story reminds me I was in a similar situation because I was a CEO of a car manufacturing in China. I producing and sales about 3,000 cars a day. I was very proud about the, uh, my work and, uh, but in reality, I produce the pollution every day. So somehow I feel I have a similar sense of uh, good, like uh, the woodcutter. So this is why I, uh, I, I want to do something to compensate what I did before. By 2015, I decided to return to automotive but now return back to the traditional one. I am looking for, I can contribute to new mobility of uh, 
human being. So my perspective of uh, new mobility are uh, energy saving, environmentally friendly, and uh, efficient, convenient, smart, and enjoyable journey. So one day I met Mr. Jia Yao Ting, who is the founder of uh, LTV. I fully induced by his C plan. Therefore, I accept the role as a co-founder of a global C plan of LTV. C plan stands for Super Electric Ecosystem. C plan is not only want to do an electric vehicle. We are working on four areas. Number one, ele electric driving vehicle. Not only the energy from the battery, but the, all the energy from uh, and driven by the new energy. Second area is uh, internet. And uh, we want to build an uh, internet based on the infrastructure to connect the vehicle to the, to the internet society. Number three is ecosystem. So we are trying to use our ecosystem, like Nick mentioned, we have a seven area. We are building the uh, entertainment, sport, movie, and TV program. So we want to consolidate it to our ecosystem, to our future, future vehicle. So this is a kind of a C plan. So those four areas, we are based on two principles. Number one, we are open cooperation with capital. Number two, we are open our ecosystem cooperation. Today, we're coming here as a strategic partner for Faraday Future. We are engaged in vehicle and e-power chain and the D. And also we engaged manufacturing cooperation. In the future, we are going to engage together uh, with the uh, ROV development, autonomous development, and uh, also content entertainment cooperation. We are very excited and uh, confident with our cooperation. And finally, I would like to say, human beings are the inventor and the user of a vehicle. We should always think about the future mobility, just like a Faraday Future movie, talking about our future uh, society. We are, we are, it's take hard, and wo hard work and a tremendous effort, but we are not sitting either waiting for a chance. We, LTV and the Federal Future, come here to change and create the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ding, uh, for your, your great support and enthusiasm. Now, I've already discussed with you our team, our vision, our alliances, and that now brings me to our fourth factor that sets us apart. We are very fast. I said that slowly, because <laughs> I don't often do things slowly, because the rest of the time we're doing things fast. In fact, we're so fast that so far we have met all of our aggressive milestones. I learned a lot of this from my predecessors, from my former employers. When I joined Jaguar, it was still part of a slow and struggling British car industry. But in 1984, Jaguar privatised, and under the leadership of the charismatic John Egan, we turned things round. The brand began to prosper, rapidly bringing out new products, and returning to the winner's circle at Le Mans. And after Jaguar, I joined the legendary Lotus Mark, and it's there that I learned principles of purity, of lightweight design, speed, and efficiency. And then I moved to Tesla, to Tesla Motors. Tesla and Elon Musk 
have created something incredible, and we should all applaud them for it. The first mass-market electric vehicle, a great driving experience, a fiercely loyal customer base. They've created a growing, viable market for electric vehicles where none existed before, and they brought startup thinking to the automotive industry. Now, Tesla was founded in 2003, and five years later, they produced a limited production roadster based on the Lotus Elise platform. Seven years after founding, they began work on their first volume production factory and had 600 employees. And then after nine years, they delivered their first mass market production vehicle. Tesla moves at breakneck speed compared to the rest of the industry. But let me tell you about an update of where we are today. Faraday Future was founded just 18 months ago. And in that short year and a half, we already have a staggering 750 employees globally. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be breaking ground on our 3 million square foot factory in just a few weeks. Yes, ju just a few weeks' time. And we will deliver our first production vehicle in only a couple of years' time. So all of this in just 18 months now, I call that very fast. Well, Now, every venture is going to learn from its pioneering predecessors, and we're no exception. We're not only moving fast as a company, but we've also rethought all our processes and systems to be quicker and more efficient. Our design engineering processes are all digital, which gives us the ability to rapidly iterate new solutions and approaches, to make changes on the fly, and to use things like virtual reality to see our ideas come to alive in just a few days, rather than waiting months. We can test parts in virtual worlds before we have any physical components to test. We can optimize, we can improve everything as early as possible. Yet, whilst we pride ourselves with this speed and agility, top quality is absolute priority for us. Our vehicles will only be available when we know we can build them with extraordinary high quality, products with great capabilities, great reliability, high performance, and features that truly respond to the user's needs. But what gives us the confidence to be able to make these claims, to be sure that we can rapidly get there whilst upholding the highest standards of quality? Well, one thing we have is that we've created a new and more advanced platform. We've called it the Variable Platform Architecture, or VPA for short. The car enthusiasts amongst you we know there are lots of car companies out there who claim modular platforms. We've, we've optimized this concept and tailored it for electric vehicles. With VPA, we can dramatically compress our time to market and reduce our costs. All of our vehicles will use VPA for this approach. And to give you a better sense of what VPA is capable of, we prepared a short video, and I'd like you all to watch this now. To achieve a diverse range of smart, fully connected electric vehicles, Faraday Future engineers have developed a new, innovative, variable platform architecture. We started from the ground up with a new battery structure that's arranged into what we call strings. Adding or removing these strings both changes overall battery capacity and allows us to develop new wheelbases. Other than crumple zones, which are optimized in each specific configuration for safety, the front and rear sections remain the same. The FF platform also incorporates various motor configurations, ranging from one to three, or with special modifications, four motor layouts, we are able to alter vehicle characteristics, including two or all-wheel drive systems, extended range options, and various power outputs, all using the same platform architecture. By fitting our vehicles with the latest in internet connectivity, we'll maximize the capabilities and experience of our state-of-the-art user interface. 
Plus, they come pre-equipped for increasing levels of autonomous driving and improved safety. This intelligent, modular approach, built on a flexible battery layout and multiple powertrain configurations, means we have the potential to deliver an extremely diverse range of vehicles to market, faster and more efficiently than previously thought possible. So, as you've just seen in that video, VPA combines... <laughs> we've, we combine adaptability with stability and safety, a best-of-all-world solution. With VPA, we can add or subtract strings of batteries. Based on those power cells, we can create different models that have, a different, that have our desired range without having to redesign the entire structure. And this is really important in terms of time, cost, efficiency. One of the unique things about our VPA is that our battery configurations works in a way like a modern set of Christmas tree lights. If one goes out, the rest continue to function. It makes it, makes it much easier and much more cost-effective to replace and swap out parts. And with the battery pack in such a low central location, we can provide even greater levels of vehicle dynamic control and safety. Plus, we can make the front and rear crash zones larger and more protective. And in addition, by altering the length of the side sills, we're able to change the size and shape of the vehicle to virtually, virtually anything we want. With VPA, we can easily create multiple drive configurations. For example, we can change the number of motors for a particular vehicle, giving one greater range, or another more acceleration and horsepower. Front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or all-wheel drive. VPA provides us with so many powerful possibilities. And I'd like to give you a stronger sense of what this means to us. I'd like to invite our head of global design, Richard Kim, to the stage. Now, Richard's had an amazing career in automotive industry. He's even more incredible because of his young age. He comes to Faraday Future from Audi and BMW, working at both their American and European design studios. And his most notable work is he was the lead designer for the BMW i3, as well as the i8 Concept and the i8 Concept Spiders. All of these vehicles, which have quickly become icons as we moved around the road towards rethinking transportation. So, please welcome Richard Kim to the stage. Thanks, Nick. So, Nick was correct. VPA provides us with many powerful possibilities. It's a designer's dream. Imagine, on this architecture, you could design a luxury sedan, maybe a crossover, a compact car, an SUV, even a pickup truck. Virtually anything is possible. And if we take this power, uh, and we can even go as far as something like this.
please meet Faraday Futures FF01 concept. <laughs> So I prefer to think of the FF01 concept not so much as uh, a concept car, but more of a car of concepts, an extreme testbed for the fundamental ideas we're working on for up-and-coming production vehicles. So the job of the design team is fairly simple. Be advocates for the customer, create simple and elegant products, work intelligently, and fight ugliness. This car of concepts came about while we were working late one night on our future production car. And Nick uh, wandered in my office and noticed this sketch on my desk. And it was a high-performance electric dream car. And Nick said, you know, we could put that on our platform right now. So as you can see, we took that challenge to heart. Of course, ideas are easy, but executing them, that's the hard part. One of our core philosophies is to design the car from the inside out. After all, we spend a lot of the time in the car. And while autonomous driving is coming, we also want to make focus on how we spend our time in the car now and make sure it's refreshing and enjoyable. So we put the user's needs first. And that begins with the interior. We started with an all-white interior a pure and extremely clean aesthetic that wouldn't be practical in a traditional internal combustion race car. The seat design was inspired by NASA research on zero-gravity driving positions. So the driver is placed at a 45-degree angle, and it optimizes comfort and maximizes circulation. We've created a drive-by-wire asymmetric instrument panel built around the features the driver utilizes the most. This propeller-shaped instrument panel previews an important piece of forthcoming FF design DNA. Located in the spine of the headrest is our halo safety system, which integrates a head and neck support connection, as well as an oxygen supply and water supply through a port of our prototype helmet that we also developed in-house. We're looking at connectivity and customization in a whole new way that goes far beyond automatic climbing control or a seat that remembers your driving position. We're taking the innovative, intuitive movements of digital devices and applying them to the interior of the vehicle, incorporating swipes, pinches, and touches. Augmented reality is projected on the road as your digital co-pilot. So, this vehicle re-educates itself continuously uh, about your needs in real time. A smartphone is actually docked in the steering wheel, allowing the driver to access information, uh, control secondary functions, view live images, track their position, all without having to learn a new control language. Now, let's take a look at the exterior. As with a digital device, the race car is covered in contrasting matte and gloss finishes, smooth and three-dimensional surfaces, and light and dark values that connect the exterior to the interior. It's an extreme tablet on wheels. Utilizing lightweight composites and materials, our design team was able to experiment with new driver-focused proportions. The VPA, combined with these materials, gave us the flexibility to push the seating position all the way forward, which gives us a perfect teardrop aerodynamic profile. So FF design, our philosophy is to draw inspiration from technology companies and product design, uh, as is true for powerful mobile devices that are integral to your modern life today. This car, uh, it embodies um, a, a true, perfect user experience and it's anchored atop our powerful technology, VPA. As you look through the vehicle, through these tunnels, you'll see a highly functional, yet um, extremely uh, beautiful element we call aero tunnels. 
These aero tunnels channel air directly through the vehicle. This yields several performance benefits, like reducing drag, battery heat, and power consumption. These aero tunnels are something engineers and designers have wanted for decades. There's a main character line that runs through the vehicle. This is a crease that we are now calling the UFO line. That runs around the vehicle, and it's a subtle design cue that this car is not quite of this world. This UFO line will be a signature design element in all of our future products. Of course, we know everyone wants to see a race car in action, so let's take a look. I hope you'll agree that the FF01 concept is a serious statement and a showcase for what Faraday Future stands for. Inside and out, the design and user experience seen here is a preview of our DNA and our FF products to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. So, you've seen and heard a number of things tonight. We've talked about what drives us, literally and figuratively, to change the way the world perceives mobility. We've also talked about how we're going to achieve these ambitious goals. Number one, we have an amazing, world-class team. Two, we have a transformative vision. Three, we have incredible alliances. And four, we're moving very fast. And tonight, we've also shown you the FF01 concept, an advanced vehicle that highlights some of our ideas in design, power, connectivity, and driver interaction. But now, as we close, I'd like to leave you with just one last thought. The way that we interact with each other today is so very different to what it was even 10 years ago. And at FF, we believe, with every bone in our body, that the world is ready for a new way of looking at mobility. You don't need to have a 100-year legacy in the automotive industry to define what the next generation of transportation needs to look and feel like. For example, nine years ago, this very month, the iPhone was announced. And if you had a mobile phone in your pocket back in 2007, as I'm sure many of you will have done, it was probably a Motorola or a Palm or a Nokia or a Blackberry. Not many of you have one of those in your pockets today, do you? Apple didn't just redefine the phone. It transformed the way that we communicate, organize, and enjoy our lives. And that is what we at Faraday and Future are looking to do. We're looking to the future, seeking opportunities, 
and working to bring them to life, to help redefine the world of mobility. So, we invite all of you to come with us and to help us shape that future positively for the generations to come. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we close, I'd like to invite Richard and Ding back onto stage. So once again to everybody on behalf of Faraday Future FF and LETV, we'd like to thank you very much for... Have a good evening.